Hey, Euchre Media family, Sergey Praknevsky here. And in this video, I wanna talk about master properties in After Effects and how awesome and useful they are and kind of build a case for why you should be using them in case you don't. And before I do that, I kinda of wanna show you a problem in After Effects and then show you how to solve it using this awesome master properties. So let me start out by showing you the problem. And for this example, I have this composition team one right here. We're inside of it right now. And inside of this composition, we have another composition that lives in it. So it's a pre-comp. And if I wanted to change anything like the team name or the logo, I would have to go into this composition. So let's do that. We're gonna double click. In here, we're gonna change this team name. I'm gonna change it to something like Ukra Media FC Football Club. And then next, what I wanna do, I'm gonna change the logo. So as you can see, we have a new composition called logos and that composition has all the logos. So now to change the logo, we would have to go into another composition, into another pre-comp, right? I'm gonna double click in here and then I have list of logos. I have six of them. However, I kind of rigged it with this uh, null right here to where I have a slider. And based on the value that I type in here, that's the logo it's gonna give me. So right now it says one, we see logo one. So if I type two, it's gonna give me two and so on. So I'm gonna go with three for right now. So I made my change. I did change the logo. I did change the team name. And now I'm gonna change the color, right, of this or shape layer right here. So I'm gonna just copy that color right here. So we made three changes, right? The logo, the text, and this color right here. So now I'm gonna go back to our main composition in here. So let me refresh that. There you go. So we have made the change. We have the new logo, the new text, and the new color. Okay, so that's awesome. And if you worked for any kind of broadcast companies, or even if you've done any kind of versioning, you know that it's pretty easy up to a point. And then let's say you wanna make more of these, right? More of, more of these compositions. So then you would be like, all right, let's duplicate this and let's make all the changes inside of this composition. Then you would double click in here, you would say, all right, let's change the name of the team, right? I can say something like maybe, I don't know, soccer FC or something like that, right? But watch what happens because even though I start a new composition in here, right, it changed everything in pre-comps, which becomes a problem because it also changed it in here as well. So then what you need to do, right, you would have to create complete new composition that, that has different names. So you would take this composition, duplicate it, alt, click and drag and right, replace it. Then you would have to adjust it in here. And then you basically, play this duplication comp game to where you constantly have to duplicate, replace, and that can take you a long time. They do have a script called, I think like true comp duplicator, which speeds up the process. But again, that's one too many steps, one too many compositions, pre-comps, just all over the place. But now with master properties, I'm gonna undo everything. You don't have to do that anymore. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So let's go back to here, right? Let me undo this again. So we have Ukraine Media, let's change Let's change, let's go back to where we started. So all the way back. Okay, so we are back at square one. So we have this logo, this text, and then this color. So how would I set it up to where I don't have to duplicate these compositions? To where all I would have to do, just change stuff inside of one composition and then everything else adjust without changing everything in those compositions. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. So. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go inside of, of this composition, which we are already. And then I'm gonna go inside of this composition. So I'm going to double click and we're gonna set everything up inside of this composition. And to do that, we're gonna use master properties. So the first thing you wanna do, you wanna go to essential panel, essential graphics panel right here, essential graphics. Make sure you click on it and then you'll see it in here. Then you wanna select the master composition, the composition that you're in right now, which is logo, uh, and team name. So I'm going to go in here and go logo and team name. So now we have this composition. Then you probably would want to label this. So I'm going to say logo and team name. Okay. Next, what you want to do essentially just build your own menu in here by dragging things into it. Now, this doesn't support everything, but if you want to see what it supports, you can say solo right here, solo supported properties, and it'll show you everything it supports but I'm not gonna do that because that's one too many properties. Okay, so what I'm, I know the properties that it does support, so I'm gonna show you here in a second. So the first thing I wanna do, I'm going to select the team name, right? I wanna be able to change the name. And to do that, I'm just gonna go to the source text. And I'm gonna drag that into it. And I'm gonna say team name. 
Okay, so we have that figured out. Next, what I want to do, I want to be able to change the logo. Now, because this thing is not just like married to one composition, you can actually go into another composition and then drag things into this menu. So you're not just limited to this composition. That's the beauty of it. So I can go to this logos here and then select that slider right here, that slider, right? So I'm going to select this, press E to reveal the effects. And we have this slider that we can change the, the logo, right? One will give you logo one, two will give you logo two and so on. So I'm going to drag that into this and I'm going to call it Team Logos. Okay, so we have the name and then the ability to change the logo. And then what I want to do, let's go back to here. I want to have the ability to change the color of this uh, shape layer right here. So I'm going to select this and let's look for a color. Okay, so we have two. So I'm going to worry about this one right here. So that's the color that I want. I'm going to click and drag and drop. And then I'm going to say color. So we have three things that we want to change. And now I'm going to go back to the main composition. So we are back at the main composition here. And if you see it right here, like if you if you have it like that, then you can just collapse it down. We have a thing called master properties, which is awesome. Now, if you collapse that down, you can see that we have team name, team logos, and color, exactly what we created here. So what that means is simple. You can change the name of the team right here, the text in here by creating an expression by alt click on the stopwatch. So now we create an expression and you can type the any text that you want. However, you do want to make sure that you put quotations around it. So you want to put the text inside the quotations. It's what we call in the expressions world, a string, you add a string, it's a string of letters, right? So I'm going to say something like soccer F C. Okay. So now we have soccer FC, which is awesome. That is changed. And then and next we can do something like color or let's do a logo first. So I'm going to change it to something like logo number four. So we have a new logo and then I can adjust the color. Okay. So now we have changed the logo, the text and the color all from this composition. And naturally you would assume that even though we changed it in here, that everything else will be adjusted in pre-comps. Well, that's not the case. So now if I go and double click in here, you can see that everything stays the same in this composition, but it's not the case in that composition, which is super awesome because now you don't have to go in here and duplicate all the compositions. You can just change this one composition. So if you want to create a duplicate of this, you can just select this team one composition, control D and duplicate it. Go back into here. Let me get rid of this. Okay. And then now we can change everything else again. We can say something like, let's do United FC. And then let's do a different logo, like logo five. And then a different color. So now we have a composition that uses both of these pre comps, right? This composition that we were able to change everything. And then we have another composition that uses both of these compositions that we changed everything. And yet both of them give us different result, which is really, really cool. So in a way, these pre-comps play a role of a, like a template instead of a pre-comp that you have to replace in order to make any kind of changes. So I think this feature is super, super useful. And I mean, there are more things you can dive deep into. We have these two icons. There is a pool, which means you can pull the information from the original comps, or you can push whatever you make the change, you know, whatever changes you made here, you can push it, right? If you click on that, now this composition will have that change. So it's that simple. But anyway, as you can see, it is super, super helpful. If you've done any kind of broadcast work, like I've worked with Fox Sports, we've done a lot of, a lot of revisions and versions, and that took us a long time. We used a TrueCom duplicator, which is an awesome script. However, with this, it cleans it up much better. You don't have to have a lot of pre-comps and it's a lot faster. But let me show you some practical examples of this. The first example that I want to show you is really the same thing what we just looked at. However, I was able to take the composition. I simplified it a bit more by using some expressions, which if you want to learn more about expressions, you should definitely take our course. The link is at the bottom of this video. But Essentially, I'm using the same thing. I'm using master properties and some basic expressions. And I created this drop down menu to where instead of changing master properties in here, all I have to do just click on this drop, drop down menu and then pick the team that I want. So I can say team three. And as, as I do that, it gives me team three logo, team three name, 
and then team three color. So within one click, right, I can do team five, team six. So I don't have to go into pre-comps. As you can see, all that change is, is made inside of this composition. So master properties are awesome. Expressions are awesome. And together, they can do some magic. So this is definitely one of them. I mean, can you imagine if you just take the time and rig things, if you rig your compositions, rig your project to where if you need to make a change, all you have to do is just use a drop-down menu. And then, boom, you have it. If you need a team wipe, let's say you work for a broadcast station, and you need something quick, you don't want to be going into pre-comps, checking, unchecking things. You just take the time one time and rig things properly, and then you can just do this. Here's another example of how I used these buttons right here. They're just one single composition right in here, just one comp. And then I was able to rig it up using expressions to where I can take this cursor, which I'll be showing you how to do this in days ahead. So I can take this cursor, right? And if I hover over this button, you can see it triggers things, right? But it gives us different headlines. It's using the same composition, but again, it's totally rigged to where, even look at the cursor. So right now we, we have arrow, and then if I hover over a button, it changes to a hand. So I'm gonna show you how to do that here in a day or so. And the same thing for the buttons. You can see that they're rigged to where when you hover over it, it does something. You can see it's expression heavy and that's why it's taking some time. But if you, I mean, can you imagine with even this, you can just keyframe your mouse cursor without triggering, you know, adding keyframes for switch and all that stuff. I mean, all of that changes based on automatic things, right? If it hovers over something, it changes, it activates things. So that's another example how, again, a mouse is a master property to where it has two things in there. It has, if I click on it, you can see it has two things in here. It has arrow and hand. And I use some basic expressions to set this up. And again, buttons are just one button. As you can see, they have different headlines. But if I click on one, you can see just title one. They're all the same. So again, it cleans things up, makes things much easier and then it gives you flexibility to duplicate things and make things much better, much faster. And that's why I love master properties. The last example that I wanna show you is very similar to the one I just showed you with the mouse cursor. However, instead of our mouse cursor triggering things, we're gonna have this shape layer right here triggering our buttons in here. So let me show you what it does. Again, the same concept, we only have one composition and it is duplicated multiple times only in this composition. In other words, we don't have any pre-comps over here. Only one composition that we use as a template that has master properties. So master properties are awesome. And then we use it multiple times to create new ones. So now I can do this. So I'm gonna go full screen, I'm gonna select this. And if I move it left, watch this. When I hover over my headline, you can see it triggers things. So I can go to the next one. And as I do that, the next one highlights itself. And then this one goes away and I can keep going all the way to the left. I can go to the right. So you can see how easily I can create something complex by just moving things left and right. I mean, can you imagine creating something like this with a lot of keyframes? I mean, not only would it take you a long time to create something like this, but that just the changes alone can kill you. If a client comes back and says, hey, can you, I don't know, adjust the animation. I mean, that can take you a long time with keyframes, but knowing the basics of expressions and knowing or uh, allowing to use master properties can definitely can go a long way. And I think it's super, super useful. In fact, let me show you how easy it is to create another button. So the way I have it rigged to where I can select these buttons and then I can scale them. Maybe like that, a little bit more. And then I can just take the last one right here, duplicate it, control D, put it right here. So maybe move it up a bit more, you know, align it to the right side, align this one to the right side, and maybe take this one and shift left a few times to kind of give it a little gap here. The same here, shift right, one, two. And then we can spread them evenly, right? I can select all of them and just spread them evenly so we have equal distance between all of them. Okay, and then we can also, right, go into this one right here this headline five, now it's headline six. So I can do this. I can just change the text in here in the master properties without going into pre -comp. So I can say six. So again, I add another button instantly, right? And then I can go full screen on, on this. And now I can just move on this shape layer. I can go over headline six. As you can see, it's working quite well. You might wanna adjust the shape here to 
line up with the button size. But as you can see, it took me no time to add another button. So yeah, expressions are not going away and master properties are awesome. And with that, my name is Sergey Praknevsky and this is ukramedia.com.